Hey everyone, this lesson is the last one in this chapter, it's section 3.5, Equations of Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. This whole chapter has been about parallel and perpendicular lines, so today we're going to actually look at the equations of these two sets of lines. Uh, so what we need to do is review a little bit here. And if you recall, the slope of a line uh, is indicated by the letter M, and it is your rise over your run, or your change in Y over change in X, and then I repeated rise over run. Didn't realize that I did that. Um, or this is supposed to be Y2 minus Y1, all divided by X2 minus X1. So we are going to define a directed line segment. And this is a segment that represents moving from point A to point B and is called the directed line segment AB. Uh, we're going to do an example here and introduce you to a new equation that lets us segment or partition um, a given line into um, smaller pieces and then we can figure out the coordinate to the point that's going to give us those smaller pieces or those partitions. So the example I have here says to find the coordinates of point F along the directed line segment CD so that the ratio of CF to FD is 3 to 5. So we're given this picture here and we have somewhere on here there's a point F and it has some coordinate and it gives us a ratio of going from C to point F is 3. So we're going to go somewhere here and this distance is going to be 3 parts and then the remaining parts is going to be 5 from F to D. So going from F to D is going to be the other 5 parts. So point F is the point that is 3 eighths of the way from point C to D. And I got 8 uh, because I added my 3 plus my 5 and that comes from my ratio of 3 to 5. So we are looking for something that is again 3 parts from C and 5 parts to D. So we're going to partition this directed line segment. In order to do that here is the equation we're going to work with. It looks long, looks complicated, but it's not really that bad. Uh, so it is, we're looking at this will give us our x coordinate and this will give us our y coordinate. And I wrote down points, the coordinates for points C and D over here because I want to indicate that this is my x1 y1 and d is our x2 y2. Our ratio is 3 to 5 Oops. and these are our, our a and b values. So a is 3, 5 is b. And I'm just going to plug all of these numbers into this equation here. So starting over here, A is 3 over A plus B, so I have 3 plus 5. That's my ratios there. And it's multiplied by the change in our X, X2 minus X1. X2 is 8 minus X1 is a negative 4. Close those parentheses and then we add X1. X1 is a negative 4. And then that ends our first, our x coordinate. Now we'll work with the y coordinate. So again, a over a plus b gives us 3 over 3 plus 5. And then we're multiplying it by the difference in our y, our change in y. So y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is 5. And then add y1, which is 5. So again, this whole part is our x part of the coordinate. This is our y portion of the coordinate. So now we just have to do our math. 
this is point F. So F equals 3 over 8, because 3 over 3 plus 5, times 8, a negative times a negative gives us positive, so plus 4, and then positive times negative gives us negative, so we have minus 4. And then 3 over 3 plus 5, or 3 eighths, times our negative 8 plus 5. Continuing on with the algebra, we now have 3 eighths times 12 minus 4. Don't add these separately. Remember, you have to do your parentheses first and then your multiplication and then addition and subtraction. And then 3 eighths times negative uh, 8 plus 5. So, 3 times 12 gives us 36 over 8 minus 4. Uh, 3 times negative 8 is a negative 24 over 8 plus 5. Uh, 36 over 8 is uh, 4.5. So we have 4.5 minus 4. And then this is a negative 3 plus 5 or our final coordinate is 0.52. So F is located at the coordinate of 0.52. So if we put that over here, uh, each one of these is 2. So we go to the right 0.5, that's about here, and up 2, we are right here. So this would be coordinate F. And if you look at it, that looks about right. We've got approximately 3 eighths here and 5 eighths over here. The next portion of this section uh, is probably review from Algebra 1, and it's identifying parallel and perpendicular lines. So if we're looking at parallel lines, we know parallel lines never intersect. Therefore, their slopes have to be exactly the same. So slope 1 has to equal slope 2. And then, if we're looking at slopes for perpendicular lines, we know that they have opposite reciprocals. Or, uh, in this, this book, they talk about their product of their slopes is negative 1. And I'm going to show you an example in just a second about what that means. Um, but perpendicular means that they have 90 degrees, so they cross at a 90 degree angle. So those two theorems, the slopes of parallel lines theorem and slopes of perpendicular lines theorem, uh, you may have been introduced to in Algebra 1. So let's do an example to show you what they mean by um, their products being negative 1. So if I just make up some slope and I say that my first slope, M1, is 2 fifths, I always teach my students about opposite reciprocals. Opposite meaning take the opposite sign and then reciprocal meaning flip your numerator denominator. So for M1 we have a positive value here. The positive isn't written but it's there. So the opposite sign to that would be negative. So our slope uh, 2 for the perpendicular or slope, they'll call it 2, I'll call it slope perpendicular. Uh, we have the opposite sign so we know this has to be negative and then we're going to take the reciprocal of the slope that we are given. So we need to then uh, flip-flop our numerator denominator. So this becomes a negative 5 halves. And what they say here for the product of their slopes is negative 1. I'm going to find the product or aka multiply them. So slope 1 times our slope perpendicular gives us 2 fifths times a negative 5 halves. And if you recall, when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across numerator, straight across denominator. So we end up with a negative times a positive, which gives us negative. 2 times 5 is 10, divided by 5 times 2, which is 10, or negative 1. The next thing that we're going to 
review for you is writing equations for parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, the first example we're going to work with is write an equation of the line passing through the point negative 4, 6 and is parallel to this given line of y equals 3x minus 4. So we know 3 is our slope and we are in the form already of y equals mx plus b. If we were not in that form, we want to rearrange it so we get into that slope-intercept form. Um, so we're looking for parallel, so we have to use the same slope. And we need to find a b value or a y-intercept that goes along with this point. So what I'm going to do is I'll first plug in my slope. So I have y equals 3x plus b. And then from there I'm going to plug in these x and y values into my x and y in this equation here. So my y value is 6, so I have 6 equals 3 times my x value is negative 4 plus b. b is what we're solving for. So we have 6 equals 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus b. We need to get b by itself, so let's add 12 to both sides. And we get b equals 18. So that means our, um, sorry, not slope, our equation for the line parallel, or y parallel, equals 3x plus 18. The next example has us working with finding the equation of the line that's perpendicular through a particular point. So we have a different given equation here. And it says to write an equation of the line passing through the point negative 12, 6, that is perpendicular to the line. So we're working with the opposite reciprocal. So our slope here is two-thirds. So that means our slope perpendicular is the opposite reciprocal. So this is positive. We want to take negative, flip-flop those numerator denominator, so we end up with three-halves. So right now, to start, if we again put it into the y equals mx plus b, and we're working with perpendicular, we need to have our perpendicular slope of, let me not write this like this, sorry. Um, we'll plug in our perpendicular slope of negative 3 halves x plus b. Again, we want to take these x and y's and plug them into this equation, solve for b. So our y value is 6, negative 3 halves times x value of negative 12 plus b. So I have 6 equals negative times negative gives us positive. 3 times 12 is 36 over 2 plus b. 36 over 2 is 18. So we have 6 plus 8 or 6 equals 18 plus b. Subtract 18 from both sides and we get b equals a negative 12. So that means our equation to the perpendicular is negative 3 halves x minus 12. I was about to start another example of finding the distance from a point to a line, uh, but I'm not going to because that's a little bit longer of a process. So I'm going to break this section up into two separate videos. So this concludes here, concludes uh, the first half of section 3.5, the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So we went over how to um, partition a segment, then we went over how to find an equation that's parallel to a given point and an equation that is perpendicular to a given point and line. Uh, so that concludes today's lesson. Thank you and I will talk to you soon.